Um, nice to see everybody. Uh, my name is Kim Bash, and for those of you being following, you know um, that we run these Zoom calls nearly every week where we try and uh, focus on different types of communities in Israel, which we feel are Anglo friendly and soft landing communities for people who are looking to make Aliyah or for people who are looking to move to a different community who are already living in Israel. So Find My Community in Israel series was uh, started by me about um, early February, uh, just actually just before COVID started, where a lot of people were reaching out to me saying that they were looking to make Aliyah or come to Israel, but they weren't sure where they would fit in. And they would read about all these places online, but they really wanted to meet people who were actually living in these places. So when COVID started, we went full force and started to really investigate. And we have been doing this now for quite some time. And it's always amazing to me to meet so many different people from all over Israel. And there is really a place for everybody in Eretz Israel. And that's what this platform is all about, mm -hmm. is for us to be able to show people and invite them to meet with the locals, um, especially now when there's no opportunity of doing pilot trips. So thank you all for the people that are uh, volunteering tonight to speak on the call. Um, and we also have some very exciting real estate opportunities. I always like to offer people housing opportunities in the different places that we look into. So Natanya has always been a very Anglo uh, friendly, uh, community. We've already done uh, Ia Yamim, which is a new area now, and Poleg, as well as uh, Kirata Sharon. And uh, people were reaching out to me saying, well, we also want, what about the city of Netanya? What about North Netanya? We want to be in the city where all the action's happening, as well as be by the beach. So that's why we, we are doing uh, the city center in North Netanya today. And uh, again, thank you so much, everybody, for coming on. Um, we're going to start off first by introducing, I uh, hope they're on the call already. Um, is Rachel on the call? Rachel Hartman? Is she on? Oh, she just entered. Okay. Rachel? Let me see if she's on already. Rachel, are you on? She's not coming on. I just saw her enter the, into the room. Okay, so we're gonna leave Rachel for a, in a few minutes. Um, let's talk to Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Thank you, and thank you so much for coming on tonight. Absolute pleasure. So tell us about yourself. Okay, so my name is Susan Cohen. Um, we made Alia in April 2019. Um, we came from the United Kingdom, a place called Leeds. And we made Alia with my parents, uh, myself, and my husband, and my youngest son made Alia a month before we did. Um, already having two children living here in Ramat Beit Shemesh. Um, both married, both with children. Um, so we ended up in Netanya by accident um, because my parents, when they made Aliyah, told us that they wanted to live by the sea with a view of the sea. Um, and that was their lifelong dream. We achieved that thanks to Darren, who I can see in the top there waving to him. Um, we achieved that dream for them. Um, and we, the only part of the problem was that we were, the condition was that we would move to Netanya. Oh my gosh, that was not on our radar at all. But, Baruch Hashem, it's turned out to be one of the best moves that we've ever made. We're very, very happy here. We've made some great friends. We love Natanya. We love the community. Um, there's a lot going on here. Um, there's so much going on. I mean, Corona has affected it. But Paulette will inform you a little bit more about what is going on here in Natanya because we're involved in quite a lot of the same things. Um, I'm working here in Israel. I do a lot of volunteer work, which has really helped me with my landing in Israel. I work for a most unbelievable organization called Keep Pulling, which is a Facebook group 
which has similar ethos to your kind of ethos that we want to keep all in here in Israel. We want to help them and support them with anything that they're going through. Um, and we've got 43, 44,000 members of that group. And I'm one of the co-directors of the mental health program that takes place within called Keep All In. So if anybody who is having issues or questions about making Aliyah, please join the Facebook group, Keep All In, and um, we're there to support you. You're there to support them, we're there to support them in a different way. Um, and I think thanks to that organization and thanks to the friends that we've made, and the shul and people being so welcoming into this community that that has helped us settle and this is now our home our yeah we're really embedded into Netanya. what is your daily life like when i spoke to you the other day you were going for this walk on the beach and i was really jealous so tell us yeah, a little bit about what you do. we have a group called the runners um i don't do the running i do the walking um paulette's involved in that along with some other people and most mornings we're out either at seven o'clock, 7.30, out for an hour, an hour and a half walking. Um, sometimes we get the privilege of doing that in the evenings as well. And we meet on Shabbat afternoon and we go walking as well. And you know what? It's brilliant. We can walk on the beach. I mean, how wonderful is that? Two minutes from our apartments, we're on the beach. We've got the sea. We've got the beautiful sunsets in the evenings and the fresh air in the mornings. It's just it's life-changing, absolutely life-changing. How long have you been here, Susan, in Israel? A year and a half. Wow. And where are all the children? I've got both of my, well, two of my children live in Ram Abit Shemesh. Um, and that was where we would have ended up. Um, and then I have a son that's recently married a beautiful Israeli Ethiopian girl three weeks ago. And they're living in uh, Petak Tikva. So Wonderful. all my children are here. My grandchildren are here and we're here. And do you find it easy? I mean, there's a lot going on in the area, like shopping. Are there supermarkets around you? Oh, for sure. There's lots. I mean, in the Tanya itself, we've got loads of supermarkets. We've got the usual ones, right? Rami Levy, Supersol, Yachananov, which if anybody's coming from the UK, I'd like to say that Yachananov is probably one of the closest supermarkets you'll get to Asda or Tesco's, which is probably important for anybody from England thinking of making Aliyah. Um, and then we're not far from Khadira, where we've even got Osha Ad up there as well. The city centre is walkable from my house. I mean, I live opposite Young Israel Shul. I can be in the city centre within 15 minutes. Um, so that's easy. And we've got all sorts of shops. Everything that you really need is here in Netanya, to be honest with you. We've got the old industrial estate, the new industrial estate, Ikea. I mean, you know, come on, who doesn't love Ikea? Um, which is also brilliant when you're first making Aliyah because everybody knows I Ikea. The corona has affected things. There's no way it hasn't. But we've all kept in contact with Zoom and actually Paula and I belong to a Zoom group and we actually wrote a book about corona. Quite a few friends of ours wrote a book um, and the first lockdown and we printed it. And it's a really nice keepsake of all our feelings and everything. It was a really good project that we did together. It really kind of bonded us all. Is that just for the people in Natanya? Just for your um, group? It was just for our runners group, really. Um, but you never know. Maybe <laughs> there's something with it. <laughs> Maybe it's on Amazon soon. You never know, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you so, so much. And so, thank you so much. We had such a great interaction when we first spoke and you were so wonderful and welcoming and it was just a pleasure speaking to you. So it's, it's been really nice to get to know you. Thank, thank you. you so much. So I'm going to ask Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hello. Hi. Hi. I know Hi. you're crazy busy. So thank you so much for coming <laughs> on. Yeah. Sorry. I had, a, I had trouble logging on i i couldn't get my zoom password to work so sorry i'm a little late but no I problem thank you i know you 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 are so busy so i didn't want to leave i wanted to put you on in one of the first call for speakers so okay. tell us about yourself uh so i'm rachel hartman i teach um cooking classes and yoga um i just had a baby two months ago and we live on nitsa right on the water 
which is amazing. As Susan said, it's life-changing living near the ocean. It's, it's just so good for like mental health and relaxation. It's really nice. Um, and also I think it kind of like lends the vibe to the community that everyone here, we're just kind of like on the beach. So we're more relaxed, more chill. Um, I really like that. I moved, I've been in Israel for nine years, but we moved to Netanya a year and a half ago. So we're new to Netanya. Um, and it's great. I, I mean, I haven't lived here so long, so it took me a little bit of time to find my Hebra and now I have, um, a few friends and that's fun. Um, of course, Corona has, well, before Corona, I, I was pregnant and I broke my ankle. So <laughs> I spent the last year being pretty out of the loop, but, um, yeah, I have, People like people I didn't even know were bringing me meals for um, af after my baby was born. I think most of the people who gave me meals, I had no idea who they were. They were, um, and it was really nice. I met I met a new friend from that. Like now, she and I like text every once in a while, which is nice. Um, and her daughter just had a baby too, so like that's like helped my friend group. So it's been a very warm, welcoming community. Um, I have, so I have three kids. I have a 10 year old and a nine year old. They both go to the local Mamad school. Um, so in terms of schools, I think their school is not the best school in Netanya. Um, there's a school that's a Khardal. So it's a little bit more to the right. It's a like religious school. It's a little bit more to the right. I think that school's a lot better. Um, and then there's also a Chinuni school here, which is very well regarded. It's, it's got very good uh, scores on Madlan. Um, so I'll be switching my, my girls at the end of this year to a different school, I think, because I'm not so happy with the school, but everything else. Um, I love nearing. I don't know the name of, oh, it's, uh, I think it's Noam school is the better school. Um, somebody asked, so yeah, I I saw was, that. yeah. <laughs> what um, are they doing? Are your kids doing? Are they going to school or are they doing Zoom? So, my younger one is going to school, and my older one does uh, Zoom. And are your, are your kids able? Are you able to walk to the school? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's like a 20 minute walk from my house, maybe about 20 minutes. Um, and then the Noam school would be a farther walk. It would probably want to have to take a bus or, um, yeah, you probably want to take a bus. And then there's another school near here that's maybe about 15 minutes, a little bit closer. It's uh, called Yashroon and it's also a Mamad school. I think that's the name of it. Um, and that one's, I think, pretty decent too. I've never been there. Um, and then there's Bialik is the Chiluni school that's very well regarded and it's a little bit past the key car from me. So maybe it's about, I don't know, 20 minutes, something like that. Yeah. But it's a good community for kids though. There's like a lot of kids here. There's a lot of playgrounds that a lot of really nice playgrounds. My kids are like playground connoisseurs and they have really beautiful playgrounds here. The, if you like eating out, I'm a big foodie. There's a lot of good restaurants here. There's an Asian food store, which is great for me because I teach Asian cooking classes <laughs> and I've been able to find things there that I couldn't find anywhere else in Israel. Um, so that's been good. Um, and your yoga and your yoga, you teach as well privately? Um, well, I stopped when I broke my ankle, <laughs> so I haven't taught yoga for like a year. But yeah, I am a yoga teacher. <laughs> you can do it on Zoom now as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it on, like, I, I've i taken a class on Zoom, and um, a lot of my teachers in India, I'll take, you know, they'll try and make classes here, so I'll try and make classes with them. Wow. Yeah. So, and, and in terms of um, friends, you have, like you said, you've made a lot of friends. Has it been mostly Anglos, or are you friends with any Israelis? So it's funny here, I really made friends mostly with, uh, with Olim. My Hebrew is not the strongest. Like I can 
get around in my life in Hebrew, but to like have a friend where you sit with and you talk to for like an hours and hours. I do have some Israeli friends that we speak like kind of chetzi chetzi, um, but I kind of, it's easier for me with someone who speaks really good English. Um, but what's interesting here is like, is my friends are across spectrums. I have friends who like fully cover their hair and, you know, wear like very tnua, very religious, like go to like, you know, the the more religious school. And then I have some friends that are very chiluni and it seems to be the normal here that like people don't say, oh, well, you're a different level of observance. So you're not gonna, like there, it's more everyone kind of, you know, oh, you seem like a cool person, I'll be friends with you. And I really like that. I really like that. And it's not like that in a lot of other places in, in Israel, a lot of other places, they'll be like, oh, you, you know, I cover with a, like I wear a keshet or I wear a this or like whatever. And um, so I think that's really nice too. Yeah, that's really positive. I've heard that it's a very welcoming community as well. Very yeah, welcoming. yeah. And yeah. also very active. People always want to, you know, hey, do you want to make this uh, challah baking event with me? Paulette likes to make a lot of events, I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads me. Thank you so much. Rachel. I really, really appreciate your time. I'm going to go on to the famous Paulette. <laughs> involved in so many different things. Everyone's like, have you called Paulette yet? Have you? <laughs> oh, no, I haven't even this Paulette. So thank you it's so a good much. thing I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, so, thank you so um, much. My husband and I made Aliyah four years ago from New York. Um, we had a daughter who's been here about 15 years. She works for Leket Israel. Um, we have a son who's still in New York and Manhattan who says he's not coming, but people say lots of things. <laughs> and uh, we have a daughter, son-in-law, and twin two-year-old boys who made Aliyah j last January, just at the beginning of the lockdown um, from Baltimore. And um, they're living in Kiryat HaSharon, which is the young Dutchy Anglo community. And they really love it. They're so happy there. Tons and tons of people, some friends, and the boys are in Ghan. And, and like uh, Rachel was saying, playgrounds galore. Everywhere you turn around, there's another playground. And so they're, they're having a great time. And for us, we are, there's no question that this was the right decision. We are super happy here. It is a very social community, very social. From the first Shabbos we moved in, we were invited left, right, and center for, you know, for meals and people were even doing meals at Mal Saturday night Malava Malka, which, you know, in New York was cake and coffee and here it was like a full meal. <laughs> um, and we started a lot of things since I've come and it's not just me, it's a lot of, we're a big clever here. Um, we started a women's Rosh Chodesh group. Um, once a month we have a speaker um we this is our third year and uh it's going really well and now we have availability to bring in speakers from all over the world which is great um but we get a, a pretty good turnout for that which is nice um a lot of stuff i can tell you pre-corona you know we used to have more social time people got to meet each other before and after the lecture right now it's you know it's on zoom we can still talk a little bit we have a um, women's Beit Midrash, which is in its second year, which is amazing, amazing. Uh, it's wonderful. It's one morning a week and we have different teachers and uh, it's, it's fabulous. And that's also like a, a huge group there. And it's, it doesn't require any background, you know, for somebody that people are saying, oh, you know, I don't know that much, whatever, but it, it works for everybody at every level. So that's something else that we, we started doing. And Rabbi Budulovsky was very instrumental in, in making that happen. Um, I recently became co-chair of AACI. And for those of you who don't know what it is, which I didn't until I came to Natanya, it's a, a community center for Anglos. And we have so much going on there. I mean, we have lectures and we have Chugim and we have, we used to have a lot of trips we're not having so many trips now um, but we just did a hike up in the about an hour north this past week we had to turn people away that's how popular it was it was yeah. fabulous it was a full day um, we just it, it, if you want to get involved in stuff there is no end to the amount of stuff you can do there's lots tons of shuls 
um, lot in the shuls, there's so much going on. There's a lot going on just in the shuls alone, even without ever going near anything else. Um, all kinds of activities. Um, I've become in our shul, I just got on the board. I was just voted onto the board. I've been involved in the Purim spiel. Um, you know, it's just lots of things that are happening and we love it and it's beautiful. And people say, well, how are you doing in the lockdown? And we're going, we're locked down in paradise. What can we complain about? <laughs> we look out at the sea at night and the weather is beautiful and it's beautiful and it's wonderful. My husband uh, came here and decided that he was done with working. So he's been in Kolel for the last few years and he gives a few shear in the week, which are very well attended. So he's also uh, incredibly happy. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd like to find something to complain about, but really, <laughs> there isn't anything. Not, yeah, anything negative. <laughs> <laughs> um, and everything is walking distance. I know that, you know, people say how true, you know, how, how walking distance is it, but we have very, very close to most of us is a, a whole little area with all, you know, with beauty parlors and a supermarket and a pharmacy and know, a bunch of takeout, you know, a bunch of uh, restaurants, Chinese and uh, Italian and whatever. And then a 10 minute walk away from us is the Kikar, which is reminiscent a little bit of Europe. You know, there's all these cafes and people go sit down and have coffee from early morning until you can find people there morning and late at night. And so we have a car, but we just use, we use it like to go see the kid, the grandchildren or whatever. But for the day to day, whatever we need to do, we just, we can get around just by walking. I do, I do, by the way, also have an electric bike. I do Pilates and uh, I take the bike there. Or when I go to ASCI, I take the bike there if I'm in a rush. So question. Very busy. <laughs> Very busy, <laughs> crazy busy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paulette. So that's, and I'm sure people may want to reach out to you, you know. All the yeah, people. absolutely. If somebody wants to come for a Shabbos to Natanya to test it out and see if they like it, please contact me. You're always welcome. We have a nice size apartment and uh, we don't have any kids living here. So <laughs> I, think I'm just getting... I think I'm I think. Okay, coming. sure. You don't scare me. You can come. <laughs> You can find us on, uh, you can find me on Facebook. Um, it's just my, you know, look at my name there. Thank you so, so much. We are going to cross over now to Rabbi Belosky. Uh, thank you so much for coming on now. The ra rabbi is um, part, well, runs the Young Israel of North Netanya. So I thought it was really nice of him to come on and tell us a little bit about the community. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Where are you from? It's a long story. Uh, people came to hear about the neighbor and not about me. But to keep a very long story short, I was born in Israel, raised mainly in Chutz Laaretz in several places, uh, the United States and London. And now we live in Netanya. I heard a little bit of the accent there, just a little bit. <laughs> I, I tell my students, uh, I tell my American students, excuse my British uh, vocabulary. And I tell my British students, excuse my American accent. So <laughs> what can we do? Tell us about this. I just want to begin by saying that so far, um, again, I also had a bit of trouble, trouble logging in, um, but we've heard representatives of North Netanya, which is where I live. There are other great communities in Netanya as well. Um, just as a disclaimer, um, and by all means, don't limit your, you're more than welcome to obviously move to our neighborhood, but don't limit that, uh, don't limit our, our neighborhood as your only option. We, yeah, we have- Tim, I'll answer your question. So you ask me- and Oh, I'll we just want to know about, about the shul, about what's happening, about the religious life there. Tell us a little bit about, about okay, your congregation, if, if, about the people. Fine, I'll, I'll, I'll start talking and uh, by all means interrupt me if you want to focus me to something uh, particular. Um, look, number one, uh, I'm going to put it on the table, okay, from my experience. Aliyah is not necessarily easy. And choosing where you're going to live is going to make the difference between a successful Aliyah 
and an aliyah in which you're going to regret making. And I, I'm telling you from experience, from what people tell me, you have to move to a place where you have more important than a beach, which I love, and more important than a, a um, shopping and all that, which is very important. The most important factor is um, you have to have support, whether it's a support network, whether it's family, living close to family, or living in a community with people who share your, your culture and your values. Um, you can't just pick yourself up and move to a neighborhood where you don't have family, where you don't have friends, and you don't have Anglos if that's your culture. You have to choose an area where there's going to be a support system where you can feel comfortable. Um, if that's what you're looking for, our community in North Natanya is a great uh, choice. And like I said, there are other equally good communities in Natanya as well. In Natanya, we have a shul. Everything, we have Israelis who, who are members of our shul, but nevertheless, notwithstanding, everything in the shul is in English. I speak English and, in, and Hebrew, but all the announcements, the website, the shiurim, everything is in English. So you could live in Israel, you could go to Ulpan, you could learn Hebrew, but you know that you have a communal home uh, to belong to where, where you can talk the language, where you're more comfortable with, and you can socialize with people that share your culture. And I think that's really, really important. I'd like to say one, there are two special things about Netanya, which are absolutely indispensable. Netanya is a city which represents modern Israel. We have Olim and Vatikim from all over the world. We have people who have who are born in Israel and are second, third generation Israel, and we have Olim from all over the world. We have Olim from South America, from North America, from Australia, from South Africa, from Europe. For a lot of, I mean, France is part of Europe, but we have a lot of French Olim. It's it's really a a lot of Russians. It's really a city where you walk around, around and you hear a lot of languages. I personally like that. Number two, uh, the beach is a life changer. Uh, this summer, we moved closer to the beach. Previously, we lived about 10, 15 minutes away from the community. Um, and we didn't predict this, but it made such a huge difference. Number one, living where our community lives, again, the Anglos. And number two, living so close to the beach. Susan is 100% right. It's amazing for your mental health. It really minimizes your stress. And there's a lot of stress in, in a Middle Eastern uh, country. So the, the beach is indispensable. You're not gonna find that in Bet Shemesh, in Yerushalayim, Irak Kodesh, which I dream to retire in one day. Um, the beach is something which once you live next to the beach, you can't imagine living elsewhere. And the second factor, if you are allergic, as I am, to, um, to religious battles between communities, um, Netanya is a great place to live in. There is, I don't know what the English word is, there's, there's coexistence in Netanya, like nowhere else in the country. We have non-Jews, we have Jews, we have refugees, we have Israelis, we have Hasidim, we have Tzans, we have Anglos, um, and we all play in the same parks. We enjoy the same Tayelet. We appreciate the same beach. Uh, none of the nonsense that you have in other places of the country of stones and, 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 and curses and, and protests, all the, all the horrible stuff that, we, we, that I just can't watch anymore in the news. Um, if you come to Netanya, you're going to have none of that. Uh, not from the Haredim, not from the far left, not from the far right. It's a place, it's really a city of coexistence. I've learned to appreciate that. Um, and that's very helpful in, in having a, a peaceful life. Um, so I'm just, unless you have any questions, um, I would welcome you to explore living in this beautiful place of the country. And like, like Paulette said, come for a visit. 
you heard Rachel, it's not just for retirees, it's also for, for young families. I have young children, Rachel has young children, and we, we happily live here. Thank you so, so much. I'm sorry I lost some of, I, I lost you in the beginning. My, my son pulled out the internet. So <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. Okay, um, thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, okay, next up, Jane. Hi, Jane. Uh, you tell me you hello. Hi. Hi. Okay, um, I'm Jane. I moved from the UK uh, just over two years ago. Um, I arrived with three daughters. I left an older one studying in the UK. Um, the age of eldest came at 16 and 9 and 10. Um, quite a difficult move for the 16-year-old uh, insofar as the education system is completely not what we are used to uh, in the UK. Um, and she did struggle and she has actually gone back to study because she's doing medicine. Um, however, the younger two have settled in in tremendously about smiling and we've never had any issues since uh, we've been very very happy um, I've listened to what everybody has had to say and I think there are a lot of positives uh, living in Israel and definitely for me as a as a mother of children the children have got a great life I think if people are and then they're retiring is a completely different game prepared for the bureaucracy in Israel. The bureaucracy in Israel is something that you have probably never ever experienced anywhere else in the world. And it isn't simple and it is frustrating at times, especially for those that don't language. We can't hear you so good. However, I always sort of sit out. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's a little echoey. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me better? Speak a little. Yeah, that's great. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so <clears throat> I will I'll get closer to the Arusa. So basically, I think you've got to be prepared when you come to Israel that there is a lot of bureaucracy and that is one of the minuses of living in the country. Um, however, if you are prepared to accept that when you come and accept that things probably won't move as quickly as you would like them to or what you're used to, uh, be prepared that things are a bit of a, ba a battle and a challenge. You can really reap the benefits. Um, I set up a company here. Uh, I run a building management company. I manage uh, a couple of very large towers and a hotel in the centre of Netanya at the beach. Um, I manage systems, apartments, uh, everything from plumbing to electricity. So I work in a man's world with men on a daily basis, um, which is challenging, uh, but it's also very, very rewarding. I enjoy my job. And uh, I think there's a lot to be said for sort of equal opportunities here in Israel. I think, you know, we do have to battle a little bit to get what we want. However, um, there are a lot of benefits when, you know, when you make sort of you set your goals of what you're going to do and accept the way things are. You have to accept certain things in this country, because if you don't, um, you'll drive yourself crazy. You're not you can't come here if you want to get exactly what you get in the States, service, things like forget it it's getting better but you're not going to get the same and I think that's very very important but on the positives you've got the freedom you can walk around the streets even if you want 12 one o'clock I could take my dog out for a walk at one o'clock in the morning and feel safe my children can walk to school when I lived in Manchester my kids never walked anywhere they were taken by car you've got that freedom here whatever age group we're talking about and that is something that I think just sort of overrides all the all the minuses plus you've got fabulous weather beautiful places you can travel half an hour and you can just see some of the most beautiful scenery nothing's far away um so yeah a lot of 
positives. Thank you so much. Hold on one second. So are your children, any of the kids in school, Jane? Every, I didn't, I missed the beginning part. Is anybody still with you at home? Your one daughter's back studying medicine, correct? Uh, I've got two of my girls. I've got two now in the UK, the older ones. They're like 20 and almost 19. And then I've got two younger ones who are now 11 and 12. And they're here in the education system. Um, and very, very happy. Obviously, we've got the problem with Corona now. So that's changed things. But they've been very, very happy. And they've made friends very easily. Yes, yeah. And I, I have as well. I've got so many friends, Israeli, American, Canadian, Canadian, absolutely. It's, uh, Amazing. It is Thank a melting you. year. Um, very diverse uh, set of friends. Yes, that's what Rachel was saying, a melting pot of so many different types of people. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And the last couple on our call is Roy and Lorraine Barnes. Hi, I'm sorry. Can you hear us? Hold on. Let me unmute you. Hold on. Need to unmute them. Hold on. I think they are having a problem unmuting themselves. Okay, okay. There, there you are. We got Is you. That right? Hi, yeah, everybody. We got you. Hi. Nice to see you. Hi, Dvora and everybody. Um, well, listen, you know, it's very nice to be asked to uh, come and have a look. Um, <laughs> nice. My wife's shy. Um, we're not pulling the raffles, so it's okay. Um, it's very nice um, to really take part in, in this evening. What you've done, uh, Kim and uh, um, Dvora and, and all of you, it's, it's really been wonderful. And um, it's lovely uh, listening to the Rabbi Baruch as well, um, encouraging and speaking very sensibly when he says it's not just North Netanya, obviously Netanya is made up of different components and different areas. We happen to um, have a place in South Netanya, um, but the advantage we have is right on the border, it's the last apartment in a, a road called Hagila which gives us, um, it's roughly about a 15 minute walk. And then we're in the town, we're in the main town um, and a few moments from Nizza. So um, there's no question about it. Natanya is very exciting, irrespective of which part you wish to be. And um, I, I know I, I certainly would recommend if you're, you're, you need advice is to speak to Darren. Darren is, is the man who would, um, I'm sure, guide you, um, um, Paulette. I believe it's it Paulette, the AECI. Um, that's a, a wonderful, um, a wonderful organisation. And um, my wife and I, as I say, we're Baruch Hashem. We 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 bought a place um, uh, several years ago. Um, we are at the moment in the UK. Um, ironically, we were in Israel during the lockdown, and we were there for five months before we could get back. And now we can't get back to Israel so easily. But um, Bezrat Hashem, we hope to be there soon. We have three daughters live in Ramat Bet Shemesh uh, with um, Baruch Hashem, many grandchildren. We also have our son who lives in London. And this is the, the difficult scenario because our son with his um, lovely wife and grandchildren, um, we are sort of ping pong. You know, the ping pong, the, 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 the table tennis. Well, we're ping pong. We, we go backwards and forwards. And there's no question about it. It's, it's, it's becoming sort of a situation now where we have to make um, a decision as ra regarding Aliyah. And um, for us, there is no brainer. And Nathaniel, first of all, we live in a place called Westcliff on Sea. I don't know if anybody's heard of that little place. Small little hill, it's by the sea. And as we look out our window, we can see the sea. The only difference is our sea is gray. When you look <laughs> out the window in Nathaniel, the sea is blue and it's a beautiful blue. So although we would be giving this up, uh, it's, it's something, um, you know, obviously we would be prepared to do at the right time. So Natanya for us, when our children were very, very small, we didn't hesitate and we used to come and actually stayed in Nizza and stayed in Jabotinsky and stayed all around with our kids. And uh, who was to know that we would uh, eventually um, basically be there and have a place there. We're very Please, I think somebody, somebody uh, during the, the many people you have here said um, lockdown, it's a lockdown in paradise. Uh, we also felt that when we were um, yeah, 
Paulette, right? Um, we also, um, you know, Philip Weiner. Yes, Paulette? Philip Weiner yeah, and Sylvia Weiner. Okay. Anyway, so um, it, it was a lockdown in, in paradise because we also were very blessed as North Natania has um, a community, a beautiful community where you have obviously Zoom. Um, we had that and do have that in South Natania whereby um, every day there's a coffee by Zoom or whatever. You're, you're never actually alone. Um, in fact, sometimes we have to switch it off because everybody, we feel they're in our kitchen. Um, <laughs> but all I just want to say is that um, if you have to choose a place in Israel, um, it's going to be a hard bet to beat something like Natanya. We are thrilled. Um, we want to return there very soon. I wish everybody who's contemplating it, Mazabruga Atzlacha, in, in your choice. Thank you so much. It was beautiful. And I hope you get back to Israel soon. Yeah, so do we. Because the weather's much better here, even though it's it's cold now, but not like England. Anyway, thank no. you so much. I want to bring on uh, my dear friend and, and partner, Rafi, who runs an amazing organization. I have him on every single call. Um, I know some of you have been following us, so if it's a repetition, I'm sorry. But for those of you who don't know Rafi Shulman, who runs an amazing organization called Olim Advisors, and I want everybody who doesn't know him, to know him and what he does. So, Rafi, where are you? Hi, Rafi. I'm here, I'm here. Okay, Hi, Rafi. everyone. And Shavuot Tov. Um, I actually made Aliyah twice. The first time I made Aliyah was from South Africa in 77. And in fact, we moved to Ramat Poleg back then, which is, you know, it was very different back then than it is now. Uh, but still on the beach and beautiful. And then we moved to Rehovot. And I lived in Rehovot for a number of years. And then my dad got a job in America and like a lot of Israelis, he said, let's go to America. We'll make a lot of money and we'll come back in, in three to five years. And it didn't go exactly according to plan, but uh, 30 years later, we, we moved, my wife and I and, and our four kids, we moved back in 2015 and now we live in Hashmonaim, which is a wonderful issue near Modin. Um, about a year after I made Aliyah, I sat down with my sister who also lives here in Hashmonaim and we were just talking about how challenging it is to make Aliyah for us. And I speak Hebrew fluently and I have a little bit of the Israeli chutzpah. And so it was very challenging. Somebody mentioned about the bureaucracy here and, and uh, the day-to-day -day struggles. And we felt that if, if it was tough for me, it must be tough for other Olim. So we met with uh, Nefesh Benefesh and we asked them, we said, is this something that other Olim are struggling with? Is it something that you do? And what they told us was that it is something that a lot of Olim uh, struggle with, especially when they are planning the Aliyah and when they, when they get to Israel. And it wasn't really their focus. And so that was, in essence, the, the go-ahead sign for us to start this organization. And the goal was really to help, to, to do two things. The first one was to help people plan the Aliyah. So we speak to a lot of people who have this dream of making Aliyah. They've been thinking about it for two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years. And they just haven't been able to put together a plan. They're not sure where they're going to move to. They're not sure what schools they're going to send the kids to. They're not sure how they're going to find a home. And it's just, a, it's a very, uh, can be a very overwhelming process. So that was the first goal. And the second goal was to help people once they get here. Um, as somebody mentioned, um, and I think the rabbi also mentioned as well, um, it's, you need the support, you know, and a lot of people have friends and family, but everybody's busy. And when you get to Israel, it's a different culture. It's a different language. It's very different from what people are used to in the States and South Africa and Australia and around the world. And so um, they just need somebody to be able to, to guide them. And so that is really uh, the purpose of what we of what we do is we we kind of walk people through the process and we help them make these big decisions. Um, in some cases, it's people that um, are still don't have a, a definitive plan; they just are thinking about it. And in other cases, we're talking to people who are moving in a month or two months and just need to kind of uh, you know dot the i's and cross the t's. And so that's really where we come in. Um, when people get here, for example, we go with them to the bank. You know, <laughs> going to the bank, my mom used to tell me, used to make her cry. Every time she would go into the bank, it would make her cry. And, and it's gotten a lot better, but it's still, uh, you know, it can be frustrating and going to the government offices and just dealing with, uh, you know, day-to-day -day challenges is something that is, uh, can be very um, overwhelming and frustrating for people. So our, our goal, and I think this is where Kim and I kind of connected when we first met is that, 
we are huge fans of Israel. We believe it's a magical place. I, you know, we want to encourage as many people as possible to make Aliyah and we want to help them. And so one of the things that we're actually launching now is we're doing a virtual pilot trip. So for people that want to do the pilot trip but can't come because of Corona, we're now going to, in essence, do it online. We'll show them communities. We'll introduce them to schools. We'll do everything that uh, people do on the physical pilot trip. And that's just one example of the way that we can help. So I, I, re I really want to encourage all of you to, to follow your dream and to see it through. I think, as, as a lot of people on this uh, Zoom call said, and I, I completely agree that it's probably one of the best decisions you'll ever make. It might take you a few months to recognize it or maybe a little longer and, and maybe the kids will take a little longer, but I am so sure that you'll get to a certain point where you'll look back and say, wow, I'm so happy that we came. And so uh, the key is planning. Like with, with, with many things in life, if you plan and you put in the time and you do the research, then it smooths out the process and really makes it a lot uh, less uh, intimidating, a lot less overwhelming and stressful. And if there's anything that I can do, I'll put my contact information in the chat. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you have any questions, it could just be, you know, I, I want to leave, but I can't leave my family or, I, you know, how do I do it or where do I go or who do I talk to? Uh, we have a lot of contacts and experience and, uh, and knowledge, and I'm happy to really share that. So, uh, you know, by all means, please feel free to reach out and, and I wish you a lot of tzacha and a lot of luck and, uh, you know, Bezat Hashem, we'll see you in Israel soon. Thank you, Rafi. And you forgot to mention a very important thing that, that Rafi um, has launched an amazing Facebook group that I'm privileged to be a moderator on. So Rafi, um, the, the group name is Anglo Support it's, it's, Network in Israel, correct? That's the right. And, and the purpose of it really is twofold. One is to help people who are making Aliyah and it's just a, a crowdsourcing. So people want to ask other people and I'll put the link in the chat so you can click on it. And the other thing is for people who want to give back. So, so many Anglos like you have mentioned want to help other people so they can just join the group. And when people pop up and say, you know, what kupa should I join or what school should I send my kid to or, or how do I find a job or do you have any connections? The goal is to really turn this into a, to a huge group. Right now, you know, in just a few weeks, thank God we have about 2,000 members that are really, you know, uh, active and, and Bezat Hashem will become bigger, bigger over time. And really, I think all of us can get together and help each other and help each other uh, fulfill the dream of living in Israel. And, and this is one way that we're trying to, trying to help. Thank you, Rafi. Please put that on the chat as well so people know or limit advisors and the name of the Facebook group. So last but not uh, the most important <laughs> is Tal and Darren. Thank you so much for coming on tonight as well. I just want to explain to you, I, um, as a profession, am a real estate agent and I partner with um, other agents that I trust and I work with. And tonight I asked uh, Tal and Darren to come on because I'm working with them on an amazing new project that they are representing. And it's in North Netanya. So I wanted them to come. A lot of people come on and, and say to me, okay, well, you presented this amazing community. So tell us about the housing options. What's the real estate like? What's the rental options like? So this is a, a project that is currently being built by Africa Israel. And I wanted them to share tonight this opportunity um, exclusively to the people on the call tonight. So thanks, Tal. Thanks, Darren. You need to unmute yourselves. Okay. We're now on Great. The thank you so much, Kim. Thank you. And thank you for having us here. Um, so I'm Talia Gal. I'm from a, a home in Israel. I work with Darren, who quite a few of you seem to know, as well as Kim. Uh, we're very excited to be exclusively marketing the Africa Israel project in the city center or the new north, as they call it. Um, so basically, when you're looking at investing in a, in a project in Israel, there are three main factors to consider. The first is that the developer is reliable and reputable. Secondly, that the construction company works to the highest standards of quality and, uh, and standards. And the third thing is, of course, location. So at Savion City, we have all three of these. Um, a little bit about Africa Israel. Um, it's a very highly acclaimed international investment uh, development group and development group. 
Um, it has a lot of uh, experience both in Israel and abroad, mainly Israel, Russia, and Eastern Europe. It was started in 1936 with the intention of helping to build up the state of Israel. So basically they have 80 years of experience and through all their experience, they've become one of the most trusted and stable residential property developers in Israel. So these are the developers and the constructors, the actual builders is a company called Sivan Bitsua, who are also one of the top construction companies in Israel. Um, they basically, um, they use the most advanced and innovative building techniques available. And the ideals are that every construction project is a fulfillment of a dream that not, has to, not only has to provide quality, but peace of mind and comfort and security. So between Africa, Israel and Sivan Bitsua, it's a really, really winning combination. Um, and thirdly, like we said, location. So Netanya is one of the largest areas in the Sharon area, and it's one of the main tourist destinations as well. Um, we have a 14 kilometer coastal strip with some of the most beautiful beaches in Israel, which a lot of you have already spoken about with so much love. Um, I agree. I've been to most of the beaches in Israel and not many of them compare with Netanya. Uh, but besides the beaches, we also have the Urusim Nature Reserve, uh, the beautiful winter lake in Agamem, um, which is a nature reserve in the middle of an urban landscape, it's something really special. Uh, and then we have all the amenities of a city center. We have some of the top schools, some of the best schools, um, museums, the most advanced stadium. Um, so again, as far as destination goes, um, it's, it's become also one of the top Aliyah destinations in, over the past few years. Um, like we've seen here, it's attracting a lot of Americans, South Africans, British, Australians, Canadians. So I would say that Natania is definitely one of the top places to be in. Um, so the Savion City project that we are marketing, hmm? yeah, put the screen up. Okay, we're going to share screen with you. Okay, can you see the? Yes. You see that? Okay. I think we need to move on. <laughs> okay. So, okay, well, this is a picture of what the project is going to look like. Okay, the Savion City project is part of a, uh, it's an urban, renew urban renewal project. As I mentioned, it's situated in the new north, which is in the center of uh, Natania. It's approximately 250 meters from the beach at uh, Nitsa. Uh, and it's about a five minute walk to the city center, Kikara Atzma'ot. Um, which is vibrant, the beautiful pr uh, promenade, and all the shops, boutiques, restaurants, um, nightlife. So it's in an area that there's so much to do, so, um, so close to everything. Okay, so the project consists of four buildings, each of them are 26 stories. They are built to incredibly high standards of quality and design. The first two buildings will be completed in December 2021, and the second two buildings will be completed in June 2024. Uh, each of the buildings have a eight meter high, beautifully designed lobby with a tenant's room, a gym. Each apartment has underground parking. There will be landscape gardens and parks. Uh, we are offering three bedroom and four bedroom apartments, many penthouses and very large penthouses. Uh, all of the apartments have large balconies and most of the apartments have beautiful panoramic sea views or open urban views um, as far as the Shoham Hills. So really amazing views. Um, all of our three bedroom apartments are east facing. There are 110 square meters with a 14 meter balcony. The four bedroom apartments are all west facing or sea facing. There are 135 square meters with an 18 square meter balcony. Uh, so the size is a large compared like, compare to a lot of the new builds that are coming up in Israel. Our apartments are quite large and the balconies are definitely larger than most. Um, 
all the apartments come with a luxurious fitted kitchen with Caesar stone, Caesar stone countertops. Central air conditioning and heating finishes are all of very high standards. Each apartment also has, a, as I mentioned before, dedicated underground parking spaces and a storeroom. Okay, next slide. All right. Um, so as far as the pricing goes, um, for the, in the first two buildings, which will be ready in a year's time, the pricing for three bedroom apartments starts from approx approximately 2,000, uh, sorry, 2,300,000. .300, and those start from the 17th floor and up. Uh, the four bedroom apartments starts from approximately 2,650,000 and we have from the 11th floor up. For apartments with panoramic sea views, the pricing will start from approximately 2.7 and 2.9 for the 24th floor. These have unobstructed panoramic sea views and are absolutely magnificent. Um, we also have penthouses on the 26th floor. Um, they're very spacious, 222 square meters with an 86 square meter terrace. And these start from approximately 5 million shekels. Um, in the buildings that will be ready in June 2024, our three bedroom apartments will start from approximately 2.150 and the four bedroom apartments from approximately two and a half million. For now, okay. Okay, that's it, you can go back. <laughs> okay. Uh, until Hanukkah, we have just released an incredible campaign with amazing discounts. Uh, deals like this we won't have again in this project um, and like I said it's until Hanukkah this gives us uh, huge discounts the prices will come down really really considerably and we have deals we can package deal um, think, so things needs. to suit everybody's needs um, and along with these amazing discounts that we have you can pay a promotion called 2080, which means you only have to pay 20% on signing of the contract and 80% you can pay on handover of the key. Wow. Which is, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, we're very excited about the promotion because uh, the prices are incredible at the moment. So basically, look, we work very closely with Kim. Kim is absolutely unbelievable. So if any of you have any more questions or would like to get some more details, feel free to contact Kim. Kim and I will work together to help you and uh, find you an apartment to suit your needs. I think it's an amazing, amazing deal. I, you know, I have been working, uh, looking in Tanya a lot for a lot of clients. And I think this is an amazing, amazing opportunity, especially, you know, when you're buying a people always say to me, what's the advantage of buying off plan, on paper, is that you really get more bang for your buck. Because as soon as construction happens and starts as a graduate, it goes on and on and on, the prices do go up. So I know personally from my family buying in Israel is that we got unbelievable deals uh, when we bought on paper. So for those of you who can even wait longer and want to wait for the three or four years, then that's also a very good opportunity. But for those who are making Aliyah or want to secure an investment now, then uh, the two buildings going up and will be finished in 2021 is definitely something to consider. And they're selling very quickly from what I understand as well. So um, I really encourage everybody, if anybody wants to make a one-on-one -on -one appointment with myself and Tal and Darren, please reach out to us and we will set about an appointment to uh to set just to see different floor plans different options that are available africa israel is one a very very well-known company um and i've sold a lot of uh, their apartments here in jerusalem so it sounds very very exciting and an unbelievable location so and until i'm assuming as the higher the floor goes the more expensive the the property depending on the view correct uh, that's correct. It does get, uh, it goes up by about uh, 20,000 shekels per floor. But um, the sea views start from about the 16th floor. Okay. And from about the 19th floor up, we have, like I said before, panoramic sea views. Really beautiful and abstracted. And there won't be construction between us and the sea in the future. Amazing. And just so, to know, we, this with where this project is, I was talking to Tal uh, a few days ago, but this is right opposite. Um, there's an Orpan 
across the road, I believe. The Orpan Center, I think, for, for Natanya is based just across the road from this area, as well as a boys' school. Um, so the location is just absolutely phenomenal, really yeah. phenomenal. So please reach out to us if anybody is interested, and we'll make an appointment for, uh, for us to talk about it. So thank you so much. And anybody who has any questions, please to ask yes carry on sorry Sorry. i just want to mention that the each building has its own separate shabbat elevator so if you do keep shabbat you can still get something on the higher floors and know that you've got a dedicated shabbat elevator that's great and it really is too like really not far from the sea at all like i mean from the beach from the sea Wow. Amazing. Amazing. So that's, that's fantastic. And uh, again, thank you so much to everybody who's come on tonight. I just want to explain, some people say to me, how does it work, you know, in the real estate, if you find an agent that you work with, and that you you don't need to work with multiple agents. In Israel, there's no such thing as a multiple listing server like you have in America, like Zillow. So it's good to find somebody, an agent who is educated and understands the market very well and they will be able to source the properties according to your criteria. So Kim Bash Real Estate, that's me and my team, we are buyer's agents. So people will come to us and say, we can't, we, you know, they'll send me listings. I'll say, we don't know what's going on. How come this agency's got the same property listed on their website and another one's got it for a different price? So we really work through all the different um, real estate brokers to find you the best possible apartments for you according to your needs. Um, and just another thing, Julian, is Julian still on the call? Is Julian gone? Hey, Julian. Okay, I Hi. just... I just want an opportunity to introduce Julian because Julian's a very good friend and um, also works with Tal and Darren. And uh, he just, I just thought it was important for him to come on the call and he really knows Natanya like Darren and Tal, like the back of his hand. And I just wanted you to introduce yourself. Okay, so thanks. And uh, once again, a pleasure being on one of the Zooms with you. And um, I think all the, all the speakers tonight uh, were, were unbelievable because they gave the, all the very good sides and the few uh, less, uh, you know, this, uh, there's not everything is perfect. But uh, I made Aliyah 43 years ago to Natanya and I've never left Natanya and I will never leave Natanya. Uh, I love Natanya. Uh, it's an amazing city to live in. It's like everybody said before, we have a bit of everything. Uh, but for everybody doesn't matter what your uh, religion, color, uh, belief is, whatever, but this place for everybody. Um, just, again, about that project. That project is amazing. And, uh, I mean, if anybody does want to find out about it and they want to speak to you guys, I mean, there's some really, really good uh, opportunities over there, with uh, not only with payments, but uh, they're very, very flexible for this uh, special until um, Hanukkah coming up. It really is a good opportunity. And like Talia said, it's really a five-minute walk uh, to the beach. There's a religious uh, school uh, basically across the road, which is probably 30 meters across the road. A uh, short walk into town where all the shops are. Um, we've spoken before about other areas in Natanya, and basically in Natanya, the length of Natanya from north to south is 14 kilometers. So if you want to go to all the big the, the industrial areas, the north and the south, you're a five or ten minute drive away. Shiru taxis, wherever you put your hand out, you'll get a Shiru taxi uh, for five shekels, and you'll land up wherever you want to be in Natanya. Three train stations at the moment. There's going to be a fourth very soon as well. So uh, to get to Ben Gurion, to get to uh, Naria in the north, to get to Jerusalem, it's all very, very quick, um, much better than the old days. And um, like, you know, again, it comes to shuls, it suits everybody, if it's from the Haredi in Sants, and uh, through to Chabad and to the young Israel shoes, which are amazing, both in Poleg and in, uh, and in Nitsa, North Netanya. A couple of years ago, people used to ask us about North Natanya if the average age is 80, 85. So I think it was a couple of years ago. Today, it's, there's a lot of young people. Our office, we are very fortunate to have our office on Nietzsche facing the sea. It's amazing. And all day we have families walking back. We've got beautiful promenades across the road. And there's lots of young families and there's uh, people, uh, mid-age people. And there's older couples as well. 
but it's it's beautiful. The Tanya is beautiful, and um, I think it gives solutions for all the Olim. Uh, it's you know people always say Natania French. I think that there are a lot more Anglo-Saxons in Natania than French. Um, and uh, there's one specific area in Natania that you will find more French, but the rest there are a lot more Anglo's. I think it's historically like that from people in Novia from the 70s, from the 60s even when the English and the South African were buying in uh, in the area of North Natania where the Africa Israel project is Nita. So, um, yeah, I can say, first of all, uh, and we definitely know for a fact, we know that uh, and we have had the, we've had the we've really pleasure, to, uh, we've had a lot of Olim from America and South Africa and England in the last two months over the lockdown. And we were all fortunate enough to cook for them, take their meals and uh, look after them and help them with the schools, uh, just being locals, not anything to do with our business. And it's been a big pleasure and we're all doing it with uh, the greatest love. And uh, we welcome everybody to Natania. There's plenty to do, a little bit less at the moment with the corona, but there's so much to do, so much, so much good in Natania. So we welcome you all to Natania. Thank you and so much. And thanks again, Kim, for having us. It's a pleasure. And I just want to want to add here, and I know that Julian's office, along with Tal and Darren, are doing this as well. I'm selling properties without people coming. So because of the, the skies aren't open and nobody knows when people are going to be able to come. So... I have been selling uh, properties via Zoom, WhatsApp calls. People are contacting me saying, can you take my brother, sister, cousin, uncle, friend out to look at a property? Because people do understand the fact that there is probably going to be a huge wave of Aliyah. We know that because Nefesh Benefesh has said that. the app, And we know from you know my work, Julian's work, and everybody who's speaking to Olim, that people are wanting to come and as soon as possible. So um, we expect a huge... I just wanna, if, I, if, if I can just add about that, uh, we, Darren, who you met earlier, we've actually changed his surname to Darren Zoom because uh, I think he's had the most unbelievable success uh, with the Zoom over the last couple, uh, the last couple of weeks and a little bit more than weeks. Um, he's done, and without exaggerating, he's done probably, I think, close to 20 deals purely through the Zoom and mostly from America and South Africa, including a very, very expensive mini penthouse, which he sold last week. And uh, we do everything. We'll put up a drone up into the air if we have to. We'll show you every single angle. Uh, we'll show you uh, inside, outside, everything. And we're there. And as much as you need, we do it. And uh, it's become, uh, due to the, it's become a very, very uh, big, um, it's become a very big thing now, our Zoom. So, uh, yes, definitely we can do that, and we do that very often. And that's what I say to people as well now, is that I, I do believe because of what's going on, the political climate in America, that people are going to come, and uh, there's so many, so many places in Israel that are amazing communities, um, and there's a home for everybody here. And, and the way that I believe in is a house is just a house, but when you find your community, that's when you find your home. And I really hope tonight that Natanya has... Uh, has opened, you know, given people a different perspective of living in the city and being by the sea. And it's it's really sounds like a beautiful place. I've been to Natanya several times and um, I'm a Jerusalem girl, but um, it is a beautiful, beautiful place. And next week we're going to be doing Zikran Yaakov. So for anybody who's interested, next week is Zikran. Um, and please feel free to send us messages uh, whatever, whichever community you want us to look into, we'll do so. Any real estate opportunities you want us to look into, whether it's Natanya or elsewhere, we're happy to do so as well. I'm going to open up the, the floor if anybody has any questions. And for those of you who have to leave, thank you so much for joining us. Thank any you, questions? Kim. Pleasure. Hi, I live in Baltimore. And um, my husband is not quite retired, but um, we would like to think about coming on a pilot trip, um, maybe for a few months and maybe renting a place. Um, uh, I don't know how doable that is, but we would want to be on the water. That was one of the reasons Natanya would be something that would be of interest to us. Um, my, my husband does do, do daf yomi every day. He would still be interested in that. We need English speaking because we don't speak Hebrew. Um, uh, we have grandchildren there. They don't live, they live in the Bayako, but, um, we don't have any other family there, but, um, I just feel like it would be, my, my husband always wanted to be by the beach. 
So what could be better than Netanya? So I don't know how you begin the process. Um, uh, we're not ready to make Aliyah at this point. We have to kind of come and feel our way a little bit. We're not youngsters anymore. Um, and if there are people like ourselves, like I say, 65 plus, um, but we're doers. We like to walk. We like to enjoy the, you know, we're not going to be sitting in our place and, you know, not doing anything. So um, where, how and where and whatever do you do to begin? <laughs> so I can, I can tell you what I tell my clients who are coming to Yerushalayim is that rentals, it depends on when you're going to come because you can't look for a rental now if you're only going to come in six okay. months time. So if you're looking for short-term rentals, there's many opportunities on Airbnb. And if you're looking for a more longer experience, then I would suggest you be in touch with uh, Tal and uh, Darren to see what is available. I would say you would look maybe about max six to eight weeks before you come because whatever's on okay. the market now is not relevant. You're not going to be relevant when you come. So but I would advise maybe just looking into Airbnb. And if you want to come for six months or more is to speak to Tal and Darren. But um, I feel like we need to do at least around six months to come for a few weeks. As I don't think will give us enough. Uh, for, sure not, for sure not. For sure. What I'm saying is if you don't necessarily find a long-term rental opportunity before you come, then you could do a short-term um, uh -huh. if you take a long term but with people like Darren and Tal and Julian and Natanya I really do trust them to find you an amazing opportunity so I don't I don't think you would have a problem finding something and I assume these places would be furnished and be able to be moved into I do want to touch while we're talking because a lot of people ask me this is uh, uh, real estate fees Okay, and what that looks like. I always be, believe in being very transparent with all my clients up front. So in Israel, it's not the same as America. A, a, a buyer and a seller both pay broker's fees. And that's for renting as well, depending on who's representing you. So let's say hypothetically, you are coming and you're going to be renting something. You would, be, um, you would pay one month rent plus VAT to that 17% to the agent who finds you your rental. Um, mm -hmm. And that goes for a buying option as well. In Israel, the standard industry fee is 2% plus VAT. And um, a buyer and a seller uh, pay that fee. It's not like in America um, where just the seller usually pays the fee. Right. That's something very important. Also, for buying, what you need to know is that the closing costs are approximately... 8% approximately on top of your purchase price. So when you're looking at budgeting, you need to make sure that you include that in the equation. What that covers is your purchase tax, which is approximately 5%, purchase acquisition tax, your broker's fee, 2% plus VAT, and your lawyer's fee, 1% plus VAT. So I'm giving you an average uh, for those people that are looking. Um, for people looking to buy on a project, it's sometimes a little bit easier because you don't have to put up the money up front. You have the 20% in this case and the 80% at the end. But in other projects, it could be broken up into different installments as construction happens. So that's just very important to put into your budget. Right. I mean, we really want to be able to walk out to the beach. That's what we want well, to be able to do. Absolutely. I'm sure that Darren and Tal can help you with rental options as well. If I can right. well, just uh, say something. Um, yes. The wife of Dr. Moshe, what's your name? Uh, my name um, is, I'll tell you, my, I, Chaya. Chaya. So uh, don't panic. <laughs> um, the way to do it is very simple. Book a flight. They won't let me in. <laughs> well, when you can, when you can. Book uh, the flight. And then just like Kim said, a few weeks before, start looking around. You won't end up on the street. There's plenty of options. Just book the flight for whenever you can. At worst comes to worst, you'll stay with your kids for two weeks. And this way, that'll give you time um, to travel from Yerushalayim Neve Yaakov to Netanya to check a few places. And again, you're coming in, you're looking for something furnished. It's not like you're coming with a lot of stuff. Um, it sounds like what you're doing is very straightforward, very easy, and it should not be a source of stress. Absolutely. Sounds uh, good. Uh, I didn't get stressed easily. <laughs> Kim, can I, can I have a word a minute? Of course, Darren. Answering. 
okay, what uh, the Rabbi Baruch said is quite right. In, all, in our experience, people, they don't really know where to start. So they, st they start by um, finding somebody to work with, somebody they know they can trust and has been recommended. And then they, we start an email thread or a phone thread or a WhatsApp thread, and we start exchanging information. We discuss with you what your needs are, whether it's for short-term rental, a long-term rental, a purchase, doesn't matter, we find your needs. Okay, so eventually, very quickly, we identify what we believe is good for you. You decide you're going to come on a pilot trip for two weeks, a month, whatever. You book a flight, okay, and we will guarantee that you will not be on the street, okay? Wherever we, we've never had a client that's not been able, we manage many apartments all over Natanya, and we will always find you an apartment to suit you, okay? Whether it's for a month, two months, six months, We'll always find you an we'll always find you an apartment. And then when you come over, we we help you educate you on the area, what there is in the area. Although what we've spoken about today, we've spoken about, but physically going, introducing you to the correct people. You want to go to the shul, introduce to the right people in the area that can help you. We will do that, and eventually you'll understand the area very very quickly. It doesn't take long, and if you like the area, you'll know within the first couple of days. And if you don't like it, which is unlikely, you'll know within a, a day or so. And then you can, you'll start feeling yourself where you want to live and how you want to live and the prices of rentals or purchasing or purchasing secondhand, purchasing not secondhand. And very quickly you have a, a plan, you start a plan without realizing it. Well, how much like are rentals, let's say just for like a two bedroom apartment? Okay. Approximately. It depends how close it is to the water. Okay, I believe um, you, be on the, you want to be in the water almost. Okay. <laughs> yes, I want to be in the water. <laughs> we, 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 can, we can arrange that. We can arrange that as well. Um, <laughs> and I'm talking about a nice apartment in a decent building with a, a Shabbat elevator mm -hmm. will be around about, for a long term, around about five, five and a half thousand shekels a month. What's that in American dollars? American dollars. <laughs> About eighteen hundred. Everyone got the calculators out. <laughs> Let's say eighteen hundred. I think it is. Okay. And then you've also got when you're doing your rent. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. How much? <laughs> now better. Like okay. Also, what I need to point out when you are doing a rental, if it is on a long-term basis, you are responsible for the anona, which is your municipal tax, and that is usually. Um, a, a once it's a year payment, it's once a year, but people pay it every month. And that depends on the zoning of the area. And it's usually, and Netanya is probably less expensive than Jerusalem, but mm -hmm. you're looking at probably between three to 500 shekels a month. Darren, correct me if I'm wrong, depending on, on the area. Um, in Jerusalem, it's more than that. More than that, five, 600 a month. Don't forget, so a person making Aliyah for the first year will get a very, very large discount. That's also true. That's also true. Okay. And there's also, uh, I think, also if you are a senior over a certain age, you also yeah, do you get, get, get that as well. Um, so yeah. that's something that you have to add on to your monthly fees in mm -hmm. a retail, as well as your VAD buy it, which is your uh, maintenance. If a building has um, shared space that gets cleaned mm -hmm. or the garage or the elevator, those are an extra couple of hundred shekels as well in a month as mm -hmm. well. Besides your electric, your gas, your water. Uh, right. So 5,000 shekels will come to probably about maybe six, six something. Between six and six and a half. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. as, you, as you go further away from the water, the prices drop a little bit. Yeah. Right. But the Nitsa area... We, if we're coming there, we want to be on the water. <laughs> Nitsa area consists of about four streets. That's it. And all the Anglo speakers live within those streets and very few live further away. That's like the, the area is close to the synagogue and it's near the beach. It's near all the kosher restaurants and eating places on Nitsa. That's where people want to be and that's the community. It's very um, all close together. I hope that helps. Can I, just, can I just come in? Hi, Jane. Jane knows Hi. all the buildings. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say, um, if you are considering moving close to the water, you find that a lot of the buildings 
are larger than two beds and the the our nona is actually quite expensive in Natalia and also the vad by it um example the vad by it where i live it's probably one of them it's about 1700 shekels a month Ooh. just for the vat is that because it has a pool it has a pool but um again it all depends on the size of the building but i know some slightly smaller buildings they're still paying around 600 shekels a month mm -hmm. And the Arnona, my last bill was, I believe, 2,000 shekels. So it does top it up quite a bit, you know, and I think you have to consider the extra costs as well on top of the rental. It is where, quite a considerable amount. Where can you get standalone houses? In, in Netanya? Yes. In Netanya, there's mostly, I will, Darren and Tulg and Julian's on the call, but Pollock Beach, you'll have standalone. And there are some villas as well in uh, South, I think South Beach as well, Darren, correct me? If we, if we start from the north, the standalone, the standalone villas on the, in the north, right opposite mm -hmm. the water, they're built on big pieces of land and they're, they are front line to the sea. And they are, you know, a lot of them are needs renovating, but the, you're buying the land and the location. Um, in in the city centre, Nitsa, there's not there's no not many standalone there's no standalone houses, and as you go to Poleg, there's an area where there's single houses. So how much would a house be like near the beach? Near the beach, we'll start about three and a half million shekels upward, but not standalone. A standalone would probably be about five million shekels upwards. Hmm. Okay, so what's the difference between what's the lingo when you say standalone villa, not standalone? What, when you're looking on the real estate sites, what what are the um, correct terms? If you just want a regular one family house in the United States, it has you know a single family dwelling. What is that called in Israel? Um, they all call it everyone's different names. They call it a um, a cottage is like a semi detached home. Okay, that's where there's a two houses joined together. A okay. villa, they call a villa, is normally a single home. Okay. Okay, thank you. And what about smaller apartments, studios and one bedrooms in buildings without Shabbat elevators? What would they run as a rental? Please. They would be around about the 4,000 shekel mark. And Arnona on something that size? And well, thank you. The Arnona will be much, much cheaper because it's smaller. The, the Arnona could be I say 50 meters, it could be six, seven hundred, maybe six, seven hundred shekels for two months. Maybe like a hundred dollars a month. Thank you so much. The further you go, Jane, away from the beach, the apartments become less expensive. So I would say, you know, the closer you are to the water, it's going to be much more expensive. Thank, same, thank you, Kim. Same, it's the same as in, in Jerusalem, you know, anything within 20 minutes walk to the old city is going to be much more expensive. So, you know, if I have a, I live in the old city and anything with a, you know, if there's only not so many houses with a, a view of the Kotel and those are very, very pricey as well as anything just outside the old city, which has a view of the old city walls. So it's the same as a beachfront uh, uh, experience. Anything that has a sea view or close to the water is going to be a heftier price tag. Are the houses Thank you. in the religious community? Um, there's different, yes, there are, I think, uh, down in Kiryat Sons, there could be, I'm not sure if there's private houses or maybe semi-attached houses, Darren, do you know about Kiryat Sons? Kiryat Sons, is all, as far as I'm aware, it's all built, it's all buildings. Well, apartments. There, there, apartments. Are there are houses on the, next to the hospital, which is uh -huh. next to Kiryat Sons. Uh, I, I want to tell you something. I've uh, we have we have six children, and there was um, our first years we we insisted on living in a large house like we did in the diaspora, um, and we we checked all those areas. We know the house, the private house market in North Netanya very well. Um, we had to move out into a flat uh, because our landlord wanted to move into their, their house. And we basically moved into a flat kicking and screaming. 
and in retrospect, we've, we've never looked back. The buildings that are built on uh, Nitsa, they're relatively new buildings. Um, these are flats that are designed for very comfortable accommodations. You're getting your ensuite bedroom, you're getting a guest bathroom, you're getting nice sized kitchens, you're getting a, a view to the sea. Um, and, and you're getting, again, neighbors who speak your own, your language, which, like I said, I think is much more important. Believe me, I lived in a private house with three floors and neighbors who were culturally very different from us. Um, so I'm not saying don't live in a private house, but liberate yourself from, from limiting only that option. Come in with an open mind, explore the options of living. You will find that a balcony to the sea, I'm telling you from experience, is so much more luxurious, comfortable, and exciting than a house with a little garden. Well, what about the noise level when you're in a development, so to speak? Okay, I, okay. Um, first of all, in general, this wasn't said, Netanya is a noisy city. Yeah. Okay. Come to Netanya only if you like living in a city. Again, this is my opinion. All right. If you want a rural countryside area um, lifestyle, my personal opinion, maybe some people will disagree. Netanya is not for you. Check out Zichron, check out, you know, but if you like the buzzy city with the markets and the buses and the people getting up to work and kids going to school. If, if you want to, if you want to see that, then Netanya is, is, is good for you. As far as within the buildings. Mm -hmm. um, That's again, I rarely see people on the elevator. Susan is the same thing in your building. We, are, we do bump into people, but very infrequently. But I must um, say that I moved from the UK from a very large house with an acre of land. And we've downsized. We're still in a large apartment now, a four bedroom that we're renting. We've downsized to this. And please God, in the not too distant future, we're going to downsize even more. And I must tell you, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. It's so liberating not to have that big house and that big responsibility. I can enjoy my life now. My husband doesn't have to spend four and a half hours every three days mowing the lawn. <laughs> you know, we, we've gained time back. We've gained space. We've gained so much stuff by moving into an apartment. I, I've never lived in an apartment in my life. You know, I was dreading it. I thought the noise from upstairs and downstairs and neighbors. In all fairness, in the block that we live in, we hear the kids occasionally, but generally it's really quiet, the block itself. But the rabbi is correct. Netanya is noisy. Um, Shlomo HaMelech can be noisy. Uh, we live on a corner of Shlomo HaMelech and Shlomo HaMelech. And Friday night, when everybody's kind of walking up to the beach, when they've got nothing else to do, it can be very noisy. Um, but you get used to that. Um, you get used to it because there's so many other things that become important to you. And that's being able to, to enjoy your life, you know, having freedom to be able to walk on the beach on a morning, walk on the beach in the evening, go and have a coffee, learn if you want to get involved in learning in the shul, in the bit midrash for the women. There's so much going on here. Yeah, everybody's pointed out there are negatives here. There's no question about it, but nowhere is perfect. But this is Israel. This is where we all belong at the end of the day. And right. we take the rough with the smooth. And I would much rather be here now than where I come from. Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. Absolutely. Thank you so much to everybody. I'm going to stay on. You're welcome to stay on as well. But again, it's been such a pleasure getting to know everybody. And I have to come and visit. I'm coming to um, stay. There's rooms waiting Susan, for you. Jane, Darren Tal. Rav, I feel it's definitely a friendly, amazing place to be. So I can't thank everybody enough. It's been such a super call. Thank you so, so much. And please, for so those of you interested in purchasing or looking at further real estate opportunities in Netanya, please reach out to me. I really do believe um, that the prices are definitely going to go, go up. So take advantage of the amazing opportunities that we are offering you. So um, thank you, everybody, and good night. 
And anybody wants to say Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Nice to meet you. You're always.